acting suspicion. Hello everyone and welcome back to a special presentation of Anime Club After Dark. I'm your host, Sho, and joining me tonight we have Alex Senpai. I just realized I actually have to come up with fucking intros now. <laughs> yeah, you can't get away with being the boring host anymore. I know. Because I stole your spot, bitch. <laughs> um, I so were at yeah, the halfway to- point. I, I thought I'd let you take the helm. Yeah, give the queen her crown. So today we're going to be discussing the 13th episode <laughs> of Vinland Saga. So in this episode, Askeladd broke a deal with a Welsh provincial leader to travel through the Welsh mountains. Um, so we have a lot to talk about with this episode because a lot went down. Um, I think we'll just start with the beginning. So the first scene we get is um, pretty interesting. We see what we come to know later in the episode to be a younger Askeladd carrying um, who we come to know later in the episode to be his mother out of the ocean and into an army. Um, So that's a very strange scene by itself. Um, I know in previous episodes, we saw like glimpses of a woman with long blonde hair. And so now we know who that woman is. And I know that you, Alex, had a thought that it was Canute. <laughs> I did have a thought that it was Canute. I'm, I'm, I was wrong. I'm, uh, I, I, See, the problem with that prediction is that Canute has better hair. That's that's <laughs> true. He, you know, he uses L'Oreal, clearly. Yes. Uh, and I thought it was his wife, but it was actually his mother, which does not have to be mutually exclusive, but they whoa, are whoa, in this whoa. case. Um, but anyways, I thought that scene was like um, pretty poignant. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I'd also like um, to point out that I didn't really get. Well, obviously, I got it when later in the episode when it was kind of revealed what that scene was all about. But when I first saw that scene, I'm like, "Is that, is that Thorfinn?" Oh, I immediately knew it was. Um, what's his face? Asklad. What's his face? Asklad. Okay, I'm like, there's so many blonde names, people. Names are not your forte with this show. <laughs> Especially when they all have the same color hair. No, but I immediately knew it was Asklad because there was a mysterious long-haired blonde woman. So I'm like, so this must be Asklad. Yeah, I, I just I didn't I didn't put that all together until I actually until later in the episode, which we'll get to. Yeah, I think it was a pretty strong uh, opening scene to start with. Yeah, I mean, and then you got you got to admit though, he does have that messy looking hair like Asklad, or I mean that that uh, that Thorfinn does. Yeah, he doesn't have the PTSD eyes, though. No, he doesn't have that. If he doesn't have, Not yet. <laughs> not yet. So, right after that scene, we get the new OP. So hype. Um, it's Man with a Mission, which is always an amazing group. The, 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 the database. Database. <laughs> lovely. You should um, sign up for American Idol. No, I um, shouldn't. <laughs> so, I have a lot of stuff to say about this OP. So it starts with a quote, which is, okay, I'm just going, I have edited the quote to make more grammatical sense, but it is, like a rowing boat, we enter the future backwards. All we see are the scenes of the past and no one can see the views of tomorrow. I, um, I want to say, I'm glad you cleaned that up because it was quite obvious that the person who actually like, you know, put that in, English is not their strong suit. <laughs> No, but I thought it was really, like, I'm halfway saying it's cringy and halfway saying it's badass. Like, the fact that (laughs) they, like, incorporated the rowing boat into there, and (laughs) I don't know, I don't know. It's like, okay, I like it for being sincere and for being a joke at the same time. I really do enjoy that quote. Well, it's it's almost like it's a really badly translated poem. (laughs) Um... I guess. I just find it funny that they're, like, comparing it to a rowing boat. I'm just like, that's... You're, like, trying so hard to apply this to Norwegian lifestyle. But it does kind of work really well. Because, I mean, the show is about getting over your past. And then you do enter... You usually um, undock your boat backwards. So, oh my god. Like, this is so deep. Three (laughs) deep five me. 
Anyways, I was impressed by that quote because it was quite something. I also think um, that th- th- that that line entering the future backwards kind of might be an allegory for revenge, which is what Thorfinn is trying to seek. I don't I don't understand why. That he's trying to go forward to get revenge by constantly looking backwards on what he wants to get revenge for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. A lot of this, um, there's a lot of revenge going on with a lot of the characters. <clears throat> Um, so I like the, the part of the OP where they have drawings and parchment, which is supposed to be like the ancient scribbles of the Norwegians, which I don't think is actually historically correct because I don't think the Norwegians kept any written records. Mo- yeah, I like wrong. not until very, very late in the, like, or at least North I don't think the sea Vikings, Empire. I don't think the Vikings kept records. Um, but I could be wrong, but I feel like I read that somewhere. Either way, I thought it's pretty cool in the OP when the parchment scribbles transition to animation. I think that's pretty hype. Yeah. Um, on the same coin, I really like how they did the, they drew the sailing routes on the map. That's pretty cool. I like the way they animated that. Can I, can I just say, when I was watching this, my immediate thought was, if Game of Thrones ever got an anime adaptation, this is what I would expect the OP to look like. Maybe not, Thrones, maybe but... not sound like, but definitely look like. Maybe. Um, there's also this uh, scene of a man tilling a snowfield. Now, I don't know if that, like, to me, that seems like something that's obviously, like, not productive. But I don't know if they actually do till snowfields in iceland i don't I, I, know i know literally nothing about farming i certainly know nothing about farming in the far north so i i'm not going to be any me helped you there i'm just going to assume that that's not possible to cultivate a snow field and if I it's mean, not possible unless you're just using a till to dig out snow but that'd be a really bad way to think so. to you know dig out snow from your field i would think yeah, assuming it's not possible, I think that's like a really powerful um, symbol or metaphor of like trying to survive in the wilderness. That was a great image. Um, we also see um, images of Canutes in this OP. First of all, crying like a baby. And second of all, later in the OP, we see him with like these dead eyes of like being so jaded and so like done with life. And I'm like, that is very different from the Canute we know right now. <laughs> that is so, clearly foreshadowing, if I ever apparently saw Apparently there's any. a lot of shit gonna go down with Canutes. And I'm ready to see it happen. You're ready to see a pure innocent boy get corrupted. Oh. No, we're not going there. <laughs> <laughs> I love the animation that they did for um, the scene where Thorfinn is in a snowstorm in front of a wolf. Mm. They, uh, the snow animation was really well, really done well. So I really like that. Yeah. They, all, there's a lot of snow in this OP, um, and it's all animated like top notch. Yeah. I think there's later on in the OP, there's one scene of Thorfinn walking through a blizzard with a broken arm. Mm. Number one, I want to know the context of that scene. And number two, great animation on the snow. Mm. And also, I just have so much things to say about this OP, but there's like there, this OP has like 500 images smacked into it. There's so oh, much going on. Speaking of the well animated snow, though, uh, you didn't write this down, but I definitely want to talk about it. At the, toward the very end of the OP, you actually see um, Thorfinn like trailing behind um, Askeladd and Canute in the snow, and then all of a mm-hmm. sudden they disappear into like a snow flurry. I thought that was a mm-hmm. really cool. I listen. I the, it's symbolizing something. What it's symbolizing, I don't know. But death. <laughs> it's obviously death. I don't know if it's gonna. It's a. If it's um a fake out or an actual see, foreshadowing. But see, but that's symbolizing. I would death. say is. I would say it definitely symbolizes death. But the way that there have been twists and turns so far in the story, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. Um. There's also, like, these images of a person holding a snowball and then quickly cut to a person holding an apple and then a person holding a bit apple, which I thought that was great imagery of, you know, um, the original sin of Christianity Mm. and um, a lot about, like, how 
a lot of the characters have committed sins themselves and they're paying for it. Um, so I, I love that symbolism. So amazing. And are, are we not going to talk about Thorfinn going all Neo in the Matrix with Thorkel's axe? <laughs> yes, I love that. Give me that fight sequence. I just want the fights in this show to just devolve into the Matrix. I would. <laughs> I would watch that. Please do. <laughs> Okay, we have talked about the OP for way too long, yeah, but there's a lot to talk about, okay? <laughs> so, it's, also, it's also a really good song, and one of the, I, I think, when we first started doing these um, reviews, when we talked about the original OP, one of the things you said was you didn't think that at certain points the music matched what you were seeing on screen with the animation. I can't say that there's, that this new OP has that going on. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. It's I, a pretty I, I I like the song. Oh I'm yeah, not like the song is head over heels for it, but I do like it. Yeah, um, I just think that the 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 music and the animations that you're seeing on screen match way better than they did with the first OP. Definitely, I think the especially for me the uh, transition between the drawings of the parch uh, the drawings in the parchment to animation mm. goes really well with the song. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, moving on to the actual episode. So, the first thing that actually happens is Asclad requests Knut to talk to the encircling army that has them pinned down. And what does Knut do? He fuck hides all. behind Ragnar. <laughs> he does when fuck everyone, all. <laughs> when everyone is looking at him, when like he's supposed to save their lives with his speech and like persuade the army not to kill them he just goes and hides behind Ragnar can i i just want to say something that, that this reminded me of so there is an anime that i watched many many years ago called Okami-san and her seven companions and the that anime had a main character who had this like intractable phobia of being stared at and anytime a character stared at him, he like tried to find something to hide behind. That's exactly what I thought about when I saw the scene. Wow. Well, that was a sad moment for Canute. It's like, if I didn't like you before, I don't like you even more. Because that was just sad. Um, but immediately after that um, scene, Ragnar defends Canute by saying that... Um, it's not his fault that he's shy. He had to be shy to survive the blood feud for succession that he grew up in. Because if he was more assertive, he would have been assassinated. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's like that. It's like that uh, old saying: "Keep your head down, and you'll actually survive." Which honestly, I can understand. Um, I because I know this now, I feel a bit more empathy for Canute. I thought you were about and to say, because I've lived this, <laughs> so I'd have many questions. Honey, that's not for on air. That's for <laughs> off air. Because the police are onto me. Okay, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, without this information, I think Canute is such an annoying char- character. But because I know this, I have a lot more... Uh, I I care for him more. Not like a lot, but I respect him a little. Yeah, I, I uh, think I think that's that's one of the things with me with characters. I try to avoid labeling a character as annoying um, until I have a, like a more complete backstory. Because with the right backstory, you can kind of understand why certain characters act the way they do. And this is a good example of that. I mean, it also like. Depends on how quickly you get the backstory because if you're stuck with this character for so long and then you finally get the backstory like so far into the show, then it's just too late and you're just like, I'm I'm done. I don't really care anymore. Like, so I'm glad if Canute Mm -hmm. had been introduced in episode one and we'd been with him all this time and we were just now getting the backstory, I'd say, yeah, you're right. That's too long to wait. But we've only been with him now for what four or five episodes. Exactly. So I think it's great timing for them to reveal this now yeah. instead of um, later. Um, so um, various other things happen. Um, one specific thing that I wanted to talk about was that while Askeladd is 
talking to the uh, Welsh leaders. Bjorn is talking with Askeladd's men about how he's becoming suspicious of Askeladd because he's been with him for 10 years and he never knew that Askeladd spoke Welsh. So, like, if Askeladd is hiding the fact that he speaks Welsh, then what else is he hiding? Mm-hmm. And I know we've talked about how uh, Askeladd has been acting suspicious in the last few episodes, and now Bjorn is catching on to it as well. And I think, again, this is sowing the seeds of foreshadowing that Athlad is going to Coup die. d'etat. Coup d'etat. <laughs> yes. Like, slowly but surely, these seeds are being sown. And I do really like how there's a lead up to it. Mm, it's you... not just all of a sudden, all at once. It's like, I don't trust you anymore. It's like, nah. Yeah, I, I think there's, it's there's a... this little chink in your arm right now. Here's another one. Here's another one. It's like, I'm starting to get suspicious, man. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really... Um happy about the writing it's really well done how they're slowly introducing these seeds of doubt i think it's very good writing uh for a political story so i think this there might be more political uh story elements that come into play um but this particular story element that we're currently on i think it's going really well yeah um, so but before you move on, I mm-hmm. do want to say this is another example of a, a situation where people are speaking multiple languages in the same scene, but they take no effort whatsoever to enunciate that because people actually have to say, oh, they're speaking another language. You wouldn't know that because everyone's still speaking Japanese. I know that's like you're and just gonna have to suspend your disbelief. I, and unfortunately, like I don't know, I don't have enough knowledge of the Japanese language, and you'd think I would of all the years I've been watching anime, of you know recognizing different accents or different dialects of Japanese. So maybe that's what's going on, and I just can't hear it because I'm not you know trained enough in the Japanese language to hear that. But it would be just so much easier to to take and you wouldn't constantly have to say characters saying oh they're speaking another language um if you just had characters spe- even if it was broken as english that you hear all the time in anime it would be so much better no i would prefer them to speak japanese and broken english because the broken english just oh so horrible <laughs> i can't deal with it um but... i just wanted to i just wanted to bring that up but it's, it's something that keeps happening in this show and i'm like it just doesn't translate really well (laughs) yeah they could do better definitely um so while asklad is talking to these uh welsh leaders we get a lot of information Mm. actually a lot a lot of this information was essentially or a lot of this episode was essentially an info dump Mm -hmm. but it was done really well i think um do you want me to talk about one of the things we learned during this whole negotiation well, yeah, just so that we're on the same page. All right. So one of the things that's definitely discussed between Asglad and this provincial le- the provincial provincial Welsh leader, um, is the 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 leader wants to know why Asglad can be trusted and why you know he why the Welsh should even try to be on their side. So it's revealed in this negotiation that Askeladd, as I think I called a couple of episodes ago, is both half Danish and half Welsh. Um, it's sort of touched on that he may in, he may be ascended from a le- the legendary Britannic king, Arturius, who may or may not have been real. Um, and uh, so how he came to be half Danish and half Welsh, his father, who was Danish, had invaded a very small part of Wales, uh, it took his mother, who, if I recall, is named Lydia. I completely forgot to write that down when I was watching the episode. Um, but he took her as sort of like the spoils of war back home as a concubine. And then Askeladd is the product of that. Um, so when Askeladd became a teen, uh, was a teenager, Lydia ended up becoming, his mother ended up becoming ill and he brought Asklad wanted to bring her back to Wales, and that's actually what you see in the first scene in the episode before the OP starts. And that's how he ended up meeting Gratianus, who is the 
Welsh leader that he met originally and is leading him through the land that he's in right now. So basically, Askeladd is a double agent. Basically, Askeladd, as I have si- sort of suspected, is playing the long game to, like, a legendary proportion. So, for a lot of these uh, podcast episodes, we've been discussing how clearly there's more to Askeladd's motivations, and now we know what his motivations are, or at least what his... What, what past fuels his motivations um but honestly i don't know if i believe this (laughs) i don't know if this is the full picture i feel like i'm still missing something because so wait not only is Askeladd playing like 18 dimensional chess with all the other characters are you saying he's playing like 80 dimensional chess with the audience okay so like from this story Allegedly, his motivation is to have revenge for his mother by helping the Welsh, I guess. Uh, Maybe. Which I'm like... It it kind of... That sort of goes in line with something he says in this episode in that he hates the Danes. Which I'm like, okay. First of all, you seem too composed of a person to be hell-bent on such an immature notion as revenge, first of all. Second of all, I feel like you're just... like I feel like that motivation is a bit too... Yeah, like, it's just too immature for you. You're such a mature character. Why would you be hung up over that one thing? Yeah, I I, don't know. I I have that same thought, too, especially as I was watching this episode. It's like... It, it, on one hand, I can certainly see it being part of his character, but for him to actually go through with something like revenge, it seems, I won't say out of character, it just seems like a step backwards for him. Yeah, I don't exactly imagine him as the kind of person who would do this sort of plan. Maybe that is his plan, but there's like more details to it that would make more sense for his character. That that maybe haven't... it's not solely for revenge. Maybe there's like, I don't know. Maybe he like the specific policies he wants to have enacted in the Danish army or the Danish government are like, if we know those, maybe they would make more sense for his character. But like, just knowing this, I'm a little skeptical like, yes, I understand somewhat. But, like, you know why I'm skeptical? Mm. And this is a problem that I addressed in one of the early episodes. Is that when your parent dies, I don't understand the motivation. Unless I see, like, some time spent with the parent where I can understand your relationship with them. Like, that's what we got with Thorfinn. That's why I understood his revenge. Whereas at Askeladd, I didn't see any time spent with his mother. How am I supposed to believe that he had, like, a meaningful relationship with her? But see, I'm is, thinking that maybe have... something like that is coming. Like, that in the form of true. flashbacks. But, the like, that's why I loved the beginning of uh, Vinland Saga, because so many anime do this for revenge for a parent, but they don't give me any reason to care. But Vinland Saga did that for Thorfinn, but it's not doing it for Askeladd, and that's why I don't believe this motivation. So, and if it's true, I don't think it's that well written. So, okay, I, I see where you're coming from, and I think this is not necessarily just an issue with with this in particular, if it, it turns out that this is the only reason that Askeladd is doing what he's doing. I think it's just a, a general problem that a lot of people have when writing stories that are centered around revenge in some way. And that, especially if it's revenge of a parent or some kind of really close family member, family member, is that there's this temptation that since it's a parent or other close family member, everyone should just be should just accept the fact that this loss was so hard that this character that's seeking revenge just couldn't take it and wants revenge. I mean, yeah, I think a lot of people might, in theory, be able to relate to that, especially if the the parent or, you know, sibling or whatever was taken very unjustly. But unless it in the realm of fiction, unless you're actually showing me why this character meant so much to the person seeking revenge, I can't buy it. Even if you tell me it's a parent. Yeah. If this was real life, if this was like a news story that like I could 
empathize with Ask Lad. But since it's fiction, this kind of shortcut of parents died, find revenge has been used way too many times. And I'm just, yeah. I need more. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's okay to, to have, well, I, I think what you're saying is it's okay to have this sort of story development. It just give me a reason for it that you actually show me. Well, like, I'm just saying that this plot device has been used so many times in uh, fiction in general that if you're going to use this plot device, you're going to have to go a little further and yeah. explain a little more. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I, I won't say it's, it's it's certainly a trope. I don't know if I'd go so far as to say it's a cliche, but it's not that far off from one either. I'm, well, it's definitely a cliche in anime. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For, yeah, for sure. I miss, I'm in, in the realm of all fiction, though. I'm not sure if it technically classifies as a cliche but i don't think it's also that far off yeah so um after the whole conversation that Asklad has with uh the welsh leaders there's this one line that Asklad says to ragnar um which is even now my men really trust me and i found this line very interesting because he says even now which means that there would be a reason for his uh, men to not trust him, which there is. Uh, as viewers, we know that because he's been acting suspicion. So, or it's asking. He's a- acting suspicion. <laughs> a- oh my god! Yes, he's been acting suspicion. Um, but now we know that Askelad is aware that his men doubt him. Yeah. Um. So I find this. Uh, this line very telling that Askeladd knows what's going on, that he knows he's making mistakes by revealing his secrets to his his men. Um, but I guess he has no choice. And we know that if you're making mistakes and you're corn- going into a corner, in these last few episodes, he's been being cornered a lot. You know, eventually you- you're not going to be able to get out of that corner. And you're gonna die in that corner. Yeah, so, I mean, ev- eventually, your what lies or what you know misdirections you've told everyone to keep suspicion off your back are going to come back and haunt you. Yeah, Askeladd's gonna dis- disintegrate into snow, just like the Opie said. Just okay, yeah. He's gonna become Jack Frost. He was. He was. He was never there to begin with. He was all a figment of everyone's imagination. Sure. <laughs> um. So <laughs> later on in the episode, we uh see Canute have an outburst um, when I forget exactly the exact context, but he was talking to Thorfinn. Oh, I don't think there was a context. I think he was just like mumbling to himself and he finally uh, got up the confidence to speak his mind. And he told Thorfinn that, you know, I can't um, speak for myself and make all these sweeping statements because everything I say has political consequences and I can't show emotion. I can't make these like quick knee jerk decisions. I can't tell you what to do. I can't give my opinion because I represent the entire country and what I say reflects what the country uh, says. So I can't do anything. So I'm just going to stay silent, which again, in addition to the backstory that we learned about Canute, I have more empathy and I'm understanding Canute better and I'm starting to like him better as a character. So I'm, I'm slowly warming up to him. Yeah, I it certainly I would say in a certain way it makes him relatable as well because he's being asked to take on an enormous amount of responsibility at a very very young age. And there's a lot of people who probably would say if they were being asked to take on that much responsibility would probably shy away from it or try to pawn it off on someone else, which is kind Maybe. of what Canute does when he always hides behind Ragnar. <laughs> No, Alex, he's being a good leader by doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, I found it really, really funny after all that like heartfelt, um, I don't know, confession by Canute. Thorfinn is like, yeah, that's just an excuse. Like, damn. Yeah, it's like savage. It's like 
sit down and shut up and just stop making excuses. I also love the fact that when Knut starts going on his little tirade against Thorfinn, Ragnar's response is like really good. It's like, oh, oh my God, he's talking to someone that isn't me. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. know how to respond to it. The best part of that scene is that the OTP is strong and alive. Oh my Knut God. Knut and Thorfinn are going strong. Okay, they're going steady. You know, the they sad are... the sad part is I, I hate the fact that you say that because there's probably already some Dojinshi out there of this somewhere. Honey, you don't even need Dojinshi because it's canon. Um <sighs> so later on in the episode, near the end, um the uh traveling whatever marching people they're still Asgard's men, right? They didn't. Well, yeah. Gate. So, so yeah. The plan that's actually um, devised between Askeladd and the uh, provincial Welsh leader is that Askeladd and his men will pretend to be prisoners being marched through Welsh territory. Um, I, I'm assuming toward wherever the king of this particular Welsh domain lives, um, as sort of like a cover story to not arouse suspicion of a bunch of Danes walking through part of Wales. And so that's, yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, so this um, parade of men uh, reach a fork in the road and notice that it has become uh, snowy. It's begun to snow. And Askeladd actually changes his mind. He's like, you know what? It's snowing. We can't cross the Welsh mountains anymore because we're going to get snowed in. So we're just going to have to cut through enemy territory and go through England. And again... There's two two things uh, with that decision. One, it's begun to snow, which means that's another foreshadowing that Askeladd's plans have failed. So, you know, he's being cornered again. And two, he changed his mind, which is going to sow more seeds of doubt in his men. It shows that he's not, like, he didn't make a good decision. It's not good for morale. And it's bad foreshadowing again. And the episode ends on Askeladd's uh, having this poker face as he marches into enemy territory. And it's such an, on- an ominous uh, expression. Uh, it's, so speaking it feels of like, ominous, speaking of ominous. It feels ominous, like he's riding into his own death. That's yes. what the expression tells to me. It's like, I'm going to die tomorrow. That's, That's <laughs> what I see. So I was going to say... On the heels of that, something that um, that that just before this starts happening is you see like this, um, oh, fuck it, what's the word? Um, a montage of the the Askeladd and his men and the some of the Welsh uh, army marching through, and the music that's playing during this it gets like really deep and really ominous, like deep tones, like uh, it's like it's dragging on, and at the same time you see like the sky getting really dark so like the whole cinematography aspect of that the way it was done was really great Mm -hmm. so we end on a new ed Mm -hmm. which i love i love this singer i love her voice she sounds like a japanese sia (laughs) and i love sia so I honestly, I'm, I'm, I really adore this song. Um, and the visuals are pretty nice too. Yeah. Um, I think you and I both also enjoyed the the first ED, uh, Torches by a- Aimer or Aimer. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, don't I really know. like that ED too. Um, but this one is called Drowned by Millet, Millet. I don't know how you're supposed to say it. Um, but yeah, like the, the, her her voice is really really good. Um, it it's still got like just like the first ED. It's got that like, uh, like Holman Hearthy feel to it quite a bit. And I think again, like with the first ED, the visuals do a, do the song justice. That's it's just a solid ED. It's, it's the best I can say about it. it it's it's solid. Yep. I'd say I I I I have to like see how it goes but i think these two eds for um vinland saga that we've gotten i'm probably going to nominate them both for ed of the year like that's how much i like them 
Yeah, they're pretty good additions. Yeah. I so I I think that that's all I got to say about it. Like it, it's it's beautifully solid that the the there, there isn't a whole lot of animation, but what animation there is, just it just flows really nicely with the music and it's pretty good animation for an ED because for, yes, for an ED not, for sure. Usually not a lot for EDs. Yeah, usually it's just like character silhouettes or or hell. Sometimes you don't even get any genuine animation in an ED anymore. It's just music and shots of characters. Yeah, so considering that, it's pretty good visuals. Mm. Well, I think that's everything we have to say about this episode. It's a lot of Thank- stuff we went over. We did. We went so over time. I hope you enjoyed the fact that we went uh, like basically double time. Um, sorry if it's boring you, but we had a lot to talk about. <laughs> so... <laughs> Thank you all out there for dropping in to listen to us. We hope you enjoyed it because we sure enjoyed bringing it to you. If you want to check out previous episodes of the podcast, you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Spotify. If you want to keep up with what we're doing, you can join us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, and our website. Shoot us an email if you have any questions or if you have ideas for topics you'd like us to talk about in the future. Links to all these things are down below in the description. I have been your host, Sho, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight, Alex. They're not shipped. Fuck you. Honey, they're a ship on a ship. Oh, God, no.